then our special guest director at the energy and climate intelligence unit seppi golzari munro uh, seppi i call this sobering what did you make of, of what a carbon action tracker have said this is really important analysis from the climate action tracker this is their way of saying hold your horses don't get swept up in the glitz and glamour of last week because there's still a job to do and we need to do it and it's interesting because from what i understand in some of the negotiating rooms there are certain countries uh, such as china and some of the other high emitting countries such as australia others saying well look let's look at implementation we don't need to ratchet up ambition anymore and this is uh, the climate action tracker way of saying don't get swept up in this there's actually a lot to be done still to ratchet up ambition and that's why we then come to what success looks like here in glasgow which we talked about earlier which is about having a mechanism in place for countries to come back within one or two years to say look this is our improved ndc this is actually what we're going to do to 2030 in this critical decade to make sure we keep 1.5 within reach so does this contradict what we heard last week from the International Energy Agency? They did some analysis at the end of last week that took into account countries' pledges going into COP26, what they, how they intended to get to net zero, also the announcements from last week as far as uh, cutting methane emissions, for example, and they calculated around all of those and they said that could bring temperatures down to a limit of 1.8 degrees Celsius. Does this contradict that or is it in line with that? This does not contradict that. It is actually in line with that. And if you look at the Climate Action uh, Tracker report, what they do is they, they say how they could get to the 1.8 degrees when they count the country pledges to 2030, the broader net zero targets this century, the sector deals. However, there is a caveat to say actually the credibility of some of these announcements is in question and a lot more work has to be done to make sure that actually these are going to be delivered and that the loopholes that we talked about earlier are closed so that actually this does not start seeping out into larger emissions than have actually been declared. And, and it's quite stark as far as uh, the gaps just by 2030 seen as a crucial decade. Uh, is that where the real problem lies, the short term action? Is the, is the ambition greater the further away uh, that we look? Or, it, it, that, that we're told it's a crucial decade, so there's not enough being done. Is that what they're keen to highlight? They're keen to highlight that this decade's not enough at the moment is being done, which is why it's so important to come back year on year to increase the ambition, increase the credibility of these things. And what I would also add here is that, you know, the real world moves very fast. You know, businesses are moving very fast. Uh, technology is moving very fast. That Actually, you will find probably that in one or two years' time, countries coming back, they will be able to do do more at the same if not lower cost because of the way that technology is moving forward and it's interesting obviously today's science and innovation day that plays a huge role here so it makes sense to come back within a couple of years and not leave it for five years by which time these will be vastly out of date so what will the organizers make of this kind of announcement will they think will the likes of alok sharma who's trying to twist arms and get people to commit to more Will you be thinking, actually, this is helpful because it's saying, look, we're not there yet. You really do need to move more. Or will he be worried that this looks like it's less likely to be a success? No, I think that they will find this helpful. And again, it's about not getting swept up in the glitz and glamour. This is about, you know, actually focusing on the nitty gritty negotiations and making sure that by the time this week ends, there's something in that deal to make countries come back to the table. And it's so interesting, isn't it, how the news management of an event like this goes. Last week, we had this what looked like quite careful um, coordination of announcements through the week. We had forests, we had a finance announcement, we had a coal announcement, uh, methane as well, spread out during the week and it looked like all oh, progress is being made. I mean, how does this, is this how COPs normally work in terms of uh, little announcements to keep the hope alive or, or 
is it unusual to, to manage news like that? Well, th this is new. I mean, you know, it, it, there's the aspect of the managing news and there is the aspect that actually these things are a big deal as well because actually this has been tipped as being the delivery cop, the implementation cop. And it's not just about talking, it's about where the rubber hits the road and making sure that the real economy movement that has that symbiotic relationship with these negotiations, that pushes these negotiations in the same way that the negotiations push them, that that is being brought to the table. So what's your feeling having heard that, but also having heard the various pledges and those announcements last week, which were positively received, of course, they, they make a, a contribution, don't they? What's your feeling now as we head towards the conclusion of COP26? Does it feel to you like we're heading in the right direction? I think this is the moment where COPs traditionally get very fraught you know again the rubber is hitting the road in the negotiations there's going to be some very messy and difficult um politics going on in each of those negotiating rooms so it is going to be fraught there is going to be a lot of tension there will have to be give and take now we wait to see where those uh, th th those red lines will will be drawn um but all in all, again, this is why we're here, and I think this is important to reiterate, this is why climate conferences happen, to keep making countries move, and that's what they are doing. Well, yes, and um, we've got ministers involved now, haven't we? We've got kind of more senior level politicians back around those tables. What difference does that make? It makes a huge difference. Again, the leaders came at the beginning of the COP. They set the direction, they set the tone. Negotiators have gone away doing the hard yards. And now the ministers are coming back, helping to kind of just get things over the line, giving that leadership, hopefully. And, and originally, the, the, the conference is due to end on Friday. Some suggestion it may run over. What's your, what are you hearing? When might we get some kind of announcement? I'd be very surprised if we did end on Friday. I think this is likely to run into Saturday, possibly Saturday night. So don't pack up your suitcase <laughs> yet. Or you. Don't make any plans. OK, Sefi Gozari-Monroe, always very interesting to get your analysis. Thanks very much indeed.